do 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 Hey everybody, how you doing? It's finally shorts weather here in Pennsylvania, so my pale legs can finally have room to breathe. This calls for a Teching 101 shorts tumble. Tumble! While wearing shorts. Okay. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Teching Berry, uh, Panda Berry hanging out back there, apparently. And today's video, as you can already assume, is going to be about bleach. Although we are going to be taking a brief break from the Lieutenant series for just one week. We'll get back to that. Um, today, I just wanted to make a video talking about the four battle tactics of the Gote 13. You know, the battle tactics. Four of which that exist. Four battle tactics for the Shinigami of the Gote 13. That's mentioned like once in the story. Well, the individual battle tactics are mentioned a lot. Uh, probably the one that comes up the most is Keto, you know, because there's always characters, you know, firing off Keto spells and everything like that. So that's one of the battle tactics. Uh, can you name the other three? I just, Barry, do you have it? Okay, okay. So the other one that's probably most prominent that gets brought up most is uh, Hakuda, which is hand-to-hand -hand combat. So you see a lot of that from the Stealth Force. You see a lot of that from Soifone, Yoroichi. You know, those characters use hand-to-hand. -hand. But it doesn't have to be, like, any sort of, like, skilled hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's like any character. Like, if Kenpachi punches you in the face, that counts as Hakuda. If Ichigo elbow slams you in the back of the head, that's Hakuda, technically. So there you go. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's another one. Um, one that does does get used every now and then but it's also like has different levels to it is zanjutsu which is the way of the sword so basically like the bushido of the shinigami okay so this involves you know swordsmanship but not necessarily utilizing your shikai and your bankai because those are individual for every single you know uh, shinigami they have different battle tactics so you have no way of like training like shikai for everybody or bankai for everybody no this is specifically like swordsmanship techniques so for example, a Zanjutsu technique and a Zanjutsu technique alone that doesn't have anything to do with Shikai or Bankai would be like the uh, ultimate technique that Kenpachi busted out against Noitera. You know which technique I refer to, right? After all, it is the single strongest move in the entire Bleach universe, right? No? You don't remember? Alright, well allow me to enlighten you. So Kenpachi was fighting against the fifth Espada, Noitera Gilga, and in a brilliant move, of Machiavellian scheming and 72D chess and uh, all of the knowledge he, he learned from Yamamoto from that one day of Zanjutsu training, he decided to take one of his hands and then add on to that one hand, another hand. Brilliant move, right? And then he firmly grasped his Zanpakuto and then he brought it down in a downward movement and that completely, I think it ripped a hole into dimensions or something. I think that's how Ichigo managed to get back to Karakura Town after Kenpachi ripped a hole in the fabric of reality with his two hands. But no, that would be just like a, a standard Zanjutsu technique. Or the technique when Yamamoto was fighting against Ion and I don't even know if he took out the sword from his cane. I think he just kind of poked eye on and it created a giant hole in his chest you know those kind of moves are zanjutsu moves okay so whenever you see a character just like taking out their sealed zanpakuto and just doing i mean it makes sense that they would learn basic sword skills i mean it's not just all about going into shikai and bankai honestly speaking unless you're fighting against really really strong opponents or like menos grande or whatever you shouldn't even have to release your zanpakuto i would imagine if you're a member of the gote 13 right they probably do not teach you in the soul reaper academy Academy. Hey, no matter what enemy you face, regardless of how strong they are or how much of a threat they pose, you better make sure to go into Shikai right away. That probably also just burns more Riatsu from you. So yeah, it's like, yeah, basic sword skills. And remember when after uh, Toshiro got his Bankai stolen from him by Kang Du during the last arc, what did he do? He went back to the training dojo in the 10th division to relearn, you know, some of the fundamental skills of Zanjutsu. So that's the kind of stuff that's like the basis for understanding your Shikai and Bankai. That's like the first level is understanding basic Zanjutsu techniques. Okay, so that was Zanjutsu, Hakuda, and Kido. And the last of these four battle tactics is Ho-Ho. Not the Pokemon, not the delicious snack treat, no. Ho-Ho, as in fast movement or the step method, okay? Now this is the one, I don't even know if Ho-Ho is mentioned by name 
at any other point in the Bleach series other than the moment when Aizen was actually explaining the four battle tactics, okay? Um, because this this thing with the uh, Ho-Ho is that the only move, I guess not the only move, but the main move that is utilized from Ho-Ho is Shunpo, which is kind of its own thing in and of itself. So Ho-Ho, as like a broad uh, scope, just means any technique in the, you know, Soul Reaper's repertoire that would allow them to move really fast, okay? So Shunpo is obviously the one that's utilized the most often. There was also the Utsu Semi technique or the Cicada Molting technique that Byakuya used when like Zomari went to go stab him and uh, he moved so fast it left his captain Hayori behind but he was able to escape. So Yoroichi, you know, taught him this skill, all right? So we got Shunpo, we got Utsu Semi, I really think those are the only ho-ho techniques we know in this story. So you might as well just call it the Shunpo category, because that's really what it is, okay? But I'm guessing, like, the fundamental training of ho-ho is learning how to respond very quickly and also how to run really fast, and then you get into more complicated moves like Shunpo, and then even more complicated moves like Utsu Semi. In fact, I think Utsu Semi, like, the actual name of that technique is the way of the stealth force number three or something, you know, Utsu Semi. So there's other very specific specific high-level stealth maneuvers that involve ho-ho. It's just that we don't learn a lot about them because the stealth force, I mean, it's explained a little bit in the Bleach story, but we don't go into a crazy amount of detail. Like, for example, if we had a whole extra Bleach story all about Soifone uh, or Yoroichi, you know, running the stealth force back like a hundred years ago or something, uh, maybe we would delve more into the secret techniques that the stealth force utilized. Um, but we just don't really have that, okay? So that's what we got. We got Shunpo under Ho-Ho and Utsusemi, and that's like all we got there, okay? So those are the four techniques. Ho-Ho, Zon Anjutsu, Hakuda, and Kido. The only time I think they're all mentioned at once was when Aizen, after he uh, betrayed everybody at the end of the Soul Society arc, he was basically just showing off on how awesome he was, which was probably like, you imagine Aizen, he's a really arrogant dude, right? And so he had to spend, you know, decades, centuries maybe, you know, uh, creating this facade and lying to everybody in the Soul Society and the Seireite. He even had to fake what his Zompok Toe did. So he had to appear as a competent leader and a Shinigami in order to get to the level of lieutenant and then eventually into the level of captain, right? So he had to appear strong, but he couldn't, you know, show off nearly a fraction of his real power, right? So finally, when, you know, oh, I guess it's all out of the bag now. I'm just going to reveal how awesome I am before I leave and defect to Wakamundo with Gein and Tozen. Um, he's explaining to everybody, you know, there are four major battle tactics of the Shinigami. Zanjutsu, Hakuda, Hoho, and Kido. Those are the four. However, no matter how much you train in one of those categories, or even if you're a prodigy and you can excel in all four of those categories, you're going to hit a metaphorical wall. That is why I seek the great power of the Hogyoku, which for the purposes of this video will be represented by a one-a-day vitamin gummy. So here's the Hogyoku right here, yes. That is why I've retrieved the Hogyoku. This mighty power will unlock and break down those boundaries, allowing me to achieve power greater than any Hollow or Shinigami in existence. I already took my vitamin today, so I'm not going to take that one. But, but, vitamins, they're important. Okay. But yeah, at the end of the day, though, it was pretty much just Aizen wanting to get off one more good burn on all of the Seireite before he left, right? He was like, yeah, even if you trained your whole life in Hakuda, hell, even if you were a prodigy and you maxed out all four of those categories, man, I went beyond that. You know, I, I mastered all that stuff hundreds of years ago before any of you Shinigami even picked up a blade. I already mastered all the Kido spells and all the Hakuda techniques. There's nothing you can do to even touch me. That was basically what Aizen was doing, right? And in fact, it's even implied, because after Ichigo goes into his Mugets form and uses the final Getsuga on Aizen, uh, or rather, I guess I should say, goes into his final Getsuga form to use his Mugetsu against Aizen, um, you know, him and Uehara are just hanging out, right, after the battle's over and before Ichigo has, like, that heart attack. He's, like, sitting down and he's talking to Uehara, and he's saying, you know, they're trying to figure out exactly why Aizen did what he did, right? Because it's like he had this massive Machiavellian scheme. He manipulated so many people, the other Shinigami the visors, the entirety of the Soul Society, you know, all part of this plan to, um, you know, kill the Rayo, you know, and so it's like Ichigo is just trying to figure out, like, why, though? Like, why did he decide to do this? When did he decide to do this? Like, at what point in Aizen's past did he decide to go on this path and have this plan for, like, hundreds of years, probably? And 
Ichigo mentions that uh, upon attaining his final Getsuga form, he was finally able to be a comparable opponent for Aizen, and so when they clashed blades that final time, Ichigo was able to read Aizen's soul, or the soul of his blade, and he says that there was nothing in that sword but just pure loneliness. So Aizen was lonely. That's the reason he wanted to kill the Soul King, right? But no, uh, you know, Ichigo hyposits like maybe it was like when, you know, ever since Aizen was born or, you know, he was brought into the Soul Society or however, um, he was like superior to everybody else. Like imagine being that much stronger ever since, you know, the beginning, right? Even more of a prodigy than like Toshiro. Imagine Aizen like looking through the uh, the Kido spell book in his younger years and just like mastering level 90 keto like on the first try which he might have very well have been capable of doing right so he's looking through all these forbidden spells like oh this is a level 90 keto this is really hard you got to train for decades in the keto core before black coffin <laughs> Wow, okay, yeah, that's, uh, wow, you know, and he's just trying out all these techniques, like the level 99 five ring dragon shit, and he could just do that, right, so he just mastered all the keto like that, hand-to-hand -hand combat, just like, boom, like obliterates a mountain, like, all right, I guess I'm good with that, Zanjutsu skills, swish, oh, I sliced the mountain in half, obviously I'm being a little bit exaggerating here, but you know what I mean, like, he was just a master from the first time he picked anything up, right, um, and then with, uh, Ho-Ho, same way, it's like, you know, oh, the, the basic technique for Shunpo is just, you know, uh, position your ankle right here at a 45 degree, and then Aizen's just doing that shit, right, so it's like, he was superior from the very beginning, and so maybe that was what caused Aizen to realize, like, I'm so alone, there's no one to fight against, there's no one that could even rival my power, which that might have led to him kind of developing a little bit of a god complex and a lot of arrogance and ego. And then he started to learn about the Rayo and the Soul King, and there's there's way more to it than just being, you know, like, oh, I'm superior from everybody, so I want to rule the world. No, it's a little bit more complicated with that, especially when we find out about the Rayo's existence and, you know, what his job really is to, like, maintain the balance of everything. And uh, Aizen, when he had that moment when he was finally breaking down to Uehara right before he got sealed, you know. It's just like, I can't believe you would subjugate yourself to that thing! You know, like, the way Aizen viewed it was like, that's like some unnatural being that you've all just, like, laid prostrate in front of. Like, why would you do that? Especially Uehara, because Aizen was really pissed at Uehara. He's like, Uehara, you are probably the only person in existence whose intellect rivals my own, if not surpasses it. Um, I guess Mayuri, but whatever. You know, you are Uehara Kisuke. Why the hell do you listen to that thing? You know, you could, you, you could take independent action. You could rule the universe. All I'm doing here is blah, 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 blah. And, and like I said, there's a lot more to it than that. I could honestly probably make a whole video just about that topic alone. Um, but, you know, the loneliness and his superiority when it came to those four tactics probably also played a pivotal role in his decision-making in his formative years. And then after a certain point, he was just like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assassinate the Rayo and I'm going to take over this whole, you know, dimensional thing, right? Right, so let me now just go through some of my favorite moments with each of these battle tactics and, you know, like the, like the highlights of when they were used during the Bleach story that really stick out to me. So, when it comes to Zanjutsu, like, my favorite moments probably include that one time that, yeah, I don't even think Yamamoto used his Shikai, it was like that, uh, Narigiri. So he, like, poked Ion's chest and blew out, like, a perfect circle there, but then he took out his sword and he was just like, Ryujin Jaka, Itotsume. Naragiri, like strike one, Naragiri, and I don't think, I don't think he released his sword for that, because it didn't turn his sword into fire, he just took out Ryujin Jaka in its sealed state, and then just, and then he just sliced Ion perfectly in half vertically, just, and then that didn't kill him, but that was a pretty badass, you know, Zanjutsu move, right? Another one of my favorites is the way that basically Mayori hacked it, where uh, during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, Mayori faced off against zombie Toshiro. Remember that scene? And Toshiro takes out his Yorimaru, and he's clashing with Mayori, and Mayori is managing to block all of Toshiro's attacks, even though Toshiro is a zombie being controlled by Giselle Guell and is attacking Mayori with a lot of, like, you know, rage and stuff. And so Mayori is like... 
Ah, don't you find it fascinating, Captain Hitsugaya, that me, a laboratory recluse, would be able to parry all of your techniques so masterfully? <laughs> so what Mayori did was, he installed a mechanism into Ashisogi Jizo, not even going into the Shikai yet, just the sealed form of Ashisogi Jizo, because Mayori is always messing around with his sword. <sighs> that poor sword. But anyway, he installs a mechanism into the guard of Ashisogi Jizo, so that it actually is like creates a sensor that detects when a sword is coming toward him and what angle it's attacking at and, like, the force behind it. And the blade of Ashisoki Jizo will adjust depending on the angle of that sword for a perfect counter. Perfect counter or a perfect parry, okay? So Toshiro attacks from the side. All Mayuri has to do is hold out the sword like this and it'll just, like, and then, you know, he moves it over here, just and then it perfectly adjusts every time. So it's like, ah, ha, ha, yes, I could train for years on end in the dojo, but I could just science the crap out of this. <laughs> and so that's what Mayori does, because he's Mayori. So that was pretty funny, where he just gamed the whole concept of Zanjutsu. He's just like, who needs to study Zanjutsu? When I just like the, who needs to study, um, you know, karate or kung fu or judo or anything? I'll just make myself a sensor body suit that allows me to move in the perfect you know fashion i think that was done on um uh family matters once i think urkel did something like that once where he created some kind of like suit that made him perfect at karate or something right so yeah yeah so stuff like that mayori would come up with absolutely so that's that's zanjutsu um keto i mean like keto is the one that's expanded the most okay and i've done actually a whole video where i go into every keto spell utilized in the canon of the of the bleach manga so make sure to go check that out there i go into all of them, but, um, you know, some of my favorite Keto are, of course, the Black Coffin, that's really cool, uh, Riku Jokoro is cool, the Restraining Keto, the Six Bars of Light, Rai Koho is really cool, um, you know, uh, Shakaho and Sokutsui are used so often, I really don't find them all that interesting, there was, like, a variant of, um, of Shakaho that Uahara used during the fight with Aizen, it was, like, a level 30 Keto, instead of firing off a red blast of fire, it fired off, like, a wide arcing yellow blast of fire, and I actually think I like that more. There's high end, which is the technique that Tozen used to burn away Grim Zhao's arm. That was really cool. Um, I like the Senju Koten Taiho, I think was the name. And that had that really long incantation that Uahara used against Aizen, the ones like that, like the sky cannon that he blasted all those rays of light at Aizen. There was actually a moment where I actually memorized the whole incantation of uh, Senju Koten Taiho, uh, but I've, I've forgotten it now. It's like years ago I had that memorized. Uh, but those are all really cool. I would have liked to see that highest level Keto um, used more often, like the five-ringed Hado dragon thing that Aizen used against Yuha in like the last two or three chapters of Bleach. That was really cool, and I think we got to see it in um, Brave Souls. They had more of an animation behind it, but in the actual uh, chapter when Aizen uses it against Yuha, it really just seems like it knocked away the earth a little bit, right? Like, he summoned this dragon out of Riatsu, and the dragon just kind of, you know, wrecked the ground. It kind of created, a, like, an earthquake sort of deal, like a chasm. Uh, but we didn't really get to see what it could do, if it could, like, fire a giant... Like, I would imagine this is, like, level 99, like, the strongest Keto there is. I would imagine it creates a giant dragon which wrecks the battlefield, and then it's, like, the freaking Zeroth hand from Hunter x Hunter, where it opens up its mouth, and it's just... Shh, lets out a massive scream, and just... Boom! Just obliterates everything in a massive, just incinerating light beam, okay? Uh, remember that we also got to see the highest levels of Bakudo fairly early on in Bleach. Actually, Tessai was the one that used those during the Shattered Shaft when Ichigo was training to, you know, get back his Shinigami powers. This was before the Soul Society arc. This was during the Substitute arc. He uses Bakudo 99 Part 1 and Part 2, which are like, Part 1 is like the restraint, and then Part 2 summons that giant block that, like, crushes you, okay? Keep in mind, it is, you know, a Bakudo, so it should be a restraint Keto, but level 99, no, that, that, that final part is something that would actually kill you, okay, and then we get into the Hados, which are more of the offensive techniques, right, but go check out that all Keto video, but there's a lot of really cool Keto in the story, obviously, then there's Hachi coming up with all of his unique Keto, like the farewell box he used on Barrigan and everything, and then finally we got Ho-Ho, which probably my favorite moment from Ho-Ho is probably just, like, fights or anything involving, um, uh, Yoroichi, uh, you know, uh, Yoroichi 
when she fought against Soifone, Yoroichi when she fought against Aizen, the Yutsu Semi technique that she can use. Um, I guess her uh, Raijin Senkei, the technique she uses, her upgraded shun Shunko form she uses against Askin, I guess that's also taking Ho Ho to the next level where she's literally moving, you know, beyond like the speed of lightning pretty much. Uh, Shunpo is already pretty fast. I don't know how exactly fast it was, but lightning moves at like, like 3,000 miles per second or something. That's just something, that random piece of information I have in my head. May or may not be true, but whatever. Um, but if she can move as fast as lightning, you know, when she's in her Raijin Senkei form, like that would be insane, right? And so she was like that Thundercat going around just shredding into Askin and everything. That was really badass. Um, but yeah, yeah, those are the four techniques. Um, you know, really not much more to go on beyond that. I just wanted to make a video talking about them because I made a video last year talking about the different hollow techniques and I made a video also talking about Quincy techniques and I thought, okay, well, let's round that out with Shinigami moves. Uh, why not? Of course, at the end of the day, though, these four kind of take a back seat because they got Shikai and Bankai. And that's kind of what the fans really latched on to, you know? It's like, oh, cool, Byakuya learned another Ho-Ho technique. Like, that's cool, but holy crap! Byakuya learned a secret technique with Senbon Sakura Kageyoshi! Now, that would be cooler, right? Right? Like, that's how it goes, honestly. Um, and also, I mean, one more thing before I go is, like, the way that Aizen described it. Um, you can't really max out all of them unless you're super special awesome like he was. Um, so if you take a chart and you have all the four techniques here, uh, depending on which Shinigami you're talking to, they each have, like, different levels of mastery, but then weaknesses in other categories. So, like, Renji, for example. Let's use Renji here. I'll give Renji a pretty high ranking in Zanjutsu, because he was part of the 11th Division, and he's mastered Shikai and his advanced Bankai and all that stuff. So I'd, I'd say Renji's specialty is definitely Zanjutsu. Hakuda is also probably pretty good for Renji, because, once again, 11th Division, he knows how to fight and brawl and everything like that. Ho-Ho, his, his Shunpo skills are pretty probably, they're okay, they're decent, you know, he can move pretty fast, but he has, like, next to no keto skills, so you could say in, um, Renji's case, like, if, like, you have certain amounts of points, like, a point value in a video game, when you start to train as a Shinigami, you can only put your points into certain categories, in the case with, uh, Renji, he definitely put a lot of it into Zanjutsu and Hakuda, a little bit into Hoho, -Ho and, like, nothing into keto. Then somebody like Toshiro that has much more of a well-rounded education when it comes to everything. His would probably look more like this. And then you have Aizen, which just breaks all the boundaries and then goes, you know, to the to the limits and then beyond said limits, right? Um, I guess Ichigo's would look more like this, too, because he's literally broken through, like, boundaries as well. Also, Ichigo learned a lot more Hakuda hand-to-hand -hand combat skills uh, when uh, he was fighting against, or he was learning his full bring and fighting against Ginjo and everybody, right? And so he, like, maxed out his physical stats, then he got his Shinigami powers back on top of that. So Ichigo's Hakuda skills would also be really good. Ichigo, you could argue, has nothing involving Kido because he never learned. Like, Kido, you have to learn, like, the spells and techniques at the academy, and he never learned that. Never even expressed any interest in learning that, which is unusual, I think. You're a 15-year-old kid that has superpowers. You don't want to learn how to fire lightning from your finger? All right, Ichigo, whatever. So his chart would probably look something like this. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll be back with the Lieutenant series next week with Nanao Issei. So thanks for watching. This will be Teching and Berries signing out. And remember, take your vitamins. Take your vitamins. <laughs>